Okay. So happy Thursday, everybody. This is Jojo Bennington. This is the Empowering Healthy Women uh, weekly 30 minutes to check in and do the um, the girl stuff, the stuff that um, feeds our soul and lifts us up and helps us be better humans out in the world. And um, so I'm so excited to have um, this Debbie Lichter on the call with us tonight. And you guys might remember that she was with us a couple of weeks ago um, talking about crystals and the amazing jewelry she makes. But um, there's this whole other part that we kind of touched on a little bit, which is um, what she does other than the cool little jewelry stuff, which is she um, really has put together three keys to be free from food addiction and really how to stop the cycle of binging and body obsession. I know none of us ever beat ourselves up, right? But um, to feel confident and lighter and really to have a healthy relationship with our food. And um, hang on a second. Here, hang on. Sorry, guys. Um, so, Tonight, Debbie's going to reveal um, the three keys from her her proven congruence code. So she's made this congruence code system for losing weight um, without dieting or obsessing over, you know, everything we do every second of the day, because I know we all do that a little bit, how to have more energy and feel um, less encumbered and more comfortable in our own skin. So um, the number one mistake most smart women make that I'm gonna start, keeps yeah, I'm gonna us share about all that stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what you're going to do. All right, then I'm, I'm not just going to give you that. that. I'm not going to give you that. So she's she's lovely, beautiful soul. You see her there. She actually used to work for Cosmopolitan Magazine, and um, she's actually done over 200 classes like this to help people feel more comfortable in their skin. So um, we're going to share a bunch of stuff, and we'll tell you how to get in touch with her afterwards. But um, please welcome Miss Gorgeous, absolutely lovely soul, bright shining light in my life, Debbie Lichter. Oh, thank Aww. you. You're thank so you welcome. So much, Jojo. Uh, oh, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Marcy. What a beautiful message. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's such an honor to be here, and I, I really, you know, I, I feel like people ask me all the time, like, well, how did you get into, you know, being a food addiction expert? I'm like, well, how do you think, you know, like I have my own journey of, you know, obsessing and binging and just like thinking about food all the time and thinking about my body all the time and worrying what other people thought about me and feeling judgmental of myself and worrying that other people were going to judge me and being totally ashamed and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I, I also felt like a complete fraud because I was a health and fitness expert and I had all of this nutrition information, all of this nutrition that anybody raise their hand. If you're like, yeah, like I know, you know, I talk to people all the time and they're like, I know what to do. And you know, I, I just don't do it. Or, you know, like I just get a case of the whatever's or the efforts or whatever, you know, and it just like, I, I just don't, I don't, I go back to the cycle. I go back to the food that I, you know, swore to myself the day before that I wouldn't have or the week before that I wouldn't have. And I end up treating myself with that very thing and the cycle doesn't stop. And, and that was me. And I just struggled with a lot of self doubt, with a lot of shame. And what I wanted more than anything was just freedom. I just wanted to be able to be comfortable in my own skin. I wanted to be able to trust myself to make healthy choices. I wanted to be able to be present when I was around people, because when I was around people, I was constantly thinking about food. So I would kind of like be in the middle of a conversation with someone and then I would start thinking about something else. And then I would come back to the conversation and I'm kind of like, where are we? What are we, what are they talking about? What's happening? Like I just, I wasn't able to be fully present. And, and so I just wanted that, you know, really simple things. But for me, that was, that was, that was feeling lighter. Like I just, I just wanted to feel lighter inside. And, and so my journey took me on a path and it was, a, it was, it was humbling because I thought that I knew, um, 
I thought that I knew what I needed because I had all the knowledge, you know, I had all this nutrition knowledge. And so I thought it was really, you know, about just being more disciplined and more focused and more committed and getting things under control. And I'm going to talk more about all of that uh, today just to, to really support um, you. But before I dive in any deeper, enough about me, I really want to hear uh, I know we're in this really beautiful Jojo. You created such an incredible, intimate community, and um, and I'm so honored for those of you who are joining live because we get to really like get into it and get juicy with it, and um, and I want it to be interactive. Um, and I also get that some folks are going to be listening to this afterwards, and I would absolutely love like I want to stay engaged. I'm this is my life's work is to women and getting free, not just from food addiction, but really from all addictions and obsessions and self-sabotaging patterns. Because I have, I have yet to meet a woman who struggles with her relationship with food or her, and, and her body who isn't here for a big, big reason to do some powerful work in the world. Like every single woman who I meet who struggles with addiction or obsession or anything like that, she like has this feeling deep down that she knows she's here to shine her light and to help a lot of people. Does anybody relate to that, by the way? Does anybody kind of like, I'm, I relate to that? Yeah. And, and, and I mean, hands down, I always experience that. And so I feel like what I get to be is a support to, you know, helping women break free from whatever's holding them back from just shining their light at that next level. So I wanted this to be interactive. So I'd love to hear um, anybody who is, courageous enough to, to share, um, you know, what, what would you like, you know, if you want more freedom around your relationship with food, like what, maybe if you're really courageous, like what the biggest struggle is, like maybe like the top struggle and you can say it in a word, you can say it in a sentence. Um, you know, you're welcome to like to unmute yourself and to share it. Um, or you can private message me and you can share it that way. Um, but I'm really curious, first of all, like what your biggest struggle is. Cause I want to speak into the things that are the most relevant to you. Cause there's so much, I mean, Jojo said that I've got three keys. I'm going to share three keys from my whole, from my, from my system. I don't have the opportunity to go into the full, um, the full system, like all of the details of the system today, but I'll share with you what I can. So, um, would anybody be willing to be courageous and share maybe just like a struggle or um, you can private message me or you can just share it um, out loud? Yes. I will. Hi, Anna. Uh, hi. Hi. So, um, I'm, so I'm a yoga instructor, a kettlebell instructor, and I'm not your typical, I don't look like your typical yoga person. And so, and I have a nutrition background too. I have, I'm a health coach and stuff like that. And so I know all the right things to do. Um, but I struggle. I don't, I honestly, I don't know what my struggle is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's figuring out that I'm not eating the right things. Am I not eating at the right time? And it's, um, it's really challenging and difficult for me to sit down and try to figure out what all of that is. Cause it's almost like I have too much knowledge for other people. Like I could pinpoint, like I could talk to somebody and say, okay, well, all right, well you're doing this. And so let's just shift this. But when it comes to me, like and Jojo and I have had this conversation like several different times where I'm just like, I'm doing all the right things, but it's not working. Like it's something's not right. And I don't know what that is. And so, um, totally. yeah. Oh my gosh. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it's, you are, you, you have so you have all the knowledge you are. I mean, you are, you're a health and fitness expert. Other people come to you for that kind of insight and you're able to see really clearly like the little shifts that they need to make. But when it comes to you, it's like, I don't know what I'm missing. Like I'm doing everything right. I don't know what I'm missing. Anybody else relate to what Anna was sharing? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is the number one thing and this was me, this was me. So, um, this is what I find. And I find that this particularly happens for high achievers and for, um, those of us who already have a lot of nutrition knowledge, um, those of us who are on a spiritual path, like if you're like checking any of those boxes or all of the above, um, what I find is that we are, we're, we're so focused on the food. We're trying to get that. We're trying to figure out the food because it's like, well, I've, I've got a problem with food. Like maybe if I eat at this time, maybe if I don't 
eat that, maybe if I cut this out, maybe if I try this particular way of eating, you know, we're, we're so fixated on the food and it really is, it's the number one problem that I find happens with, with most, you know, smart, high achieving women is that they are so conditioned and we're conditioned that way from an early age, we're conditioned to treat the symptom. Like you go to the doctor, you have a cough, the doctor, you know, says here's a lozenge or here's a, you know, here's a pill or something, you know, and we're so used to treating it that way. And what I had to uncover, which I didn't, you know, like <laughs> when I met my first spiritual mentor, she was like, yeah, of course you're having a problem because you're trying to fix a problem that you don't fully understand with an incomplete solution. I'm like, okay, like dose of humble pie right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, all right, what am, I, what am I missing? You know, what am I missing? And, and that's when I really started to uncover and discover what it means to have a real addiction. And so, um, so before I go into what it means to have a real addiction, I want to share um, like three different types of eaters. And you can maybe just, you know, listen for where you fall, like what category you fall in. Because one thing I am very, very passionate about is not having people uh, is not is not diagnosing people or being like the expert of what somebody else's truth is. I really support. In fact, when when women work with me, I guide them through a process, um, a self diagnostic process, where they can uncover their own truth about whether or not they have an addiction. But just as like a preliminary, because we don't have time for me to take you through all of that, let me just share with you these three categories, and you can just kind of start to listen and see what you relate to. So the first category is like the moderate eater. And that's the person that can like take food or leave it alone. I mean, they really like, you probably know these people. I dated people like this. I've never been like this where it literally like the food's on the plate and like, it's really yummy, but like you get full, like you just kind of lose interest in it. You walk away. It's like no big deal. Um, that's the moderate eater. Okay. The sort of like the hard eater <laughs> um, is, is someone who um, is someone who might look like they have a real addiction they might binge, they might obsess, they might, you know, do all kinds of things. And yet given sufficient reason, let's say they um, get married or let's say they have a kid or let's say they just, you know, they go to the doctor, the doctor says, hey, you know, you really got to get healthy here. Um, they can make a decision. Okay, I'm just going to stop doing that and I'm going to get healthy and they can just do it. I have a friend who back in, um, 2012, he just decided one day, um, I am going to go off sugar. And then he just like went off sugar. Like he never looked back. Like he didn't have anything. And, 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 you know, I look at him and I'm like, I love you. And that's so not me, you know, that's just not me. So the third category is, is really the folks for whom given sufficient reason, like they still go back, even though they have all the information, even though they have all of the knowledge, even though they, they don't, you know, they, like, they don't want to do it. You know, like they, 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 they have a, a bigger vision for themselves or their health. You know, their doctor might've told them that it's a health risk, or they just know that because they've done so much nutrition, you know, um, research. And yet whatever the circumstance happens, maybe you're good for a day or a week or a month or a couple months, but then a day and a time comes and you go back to the same pattern. And it's like, why am I doing that? And then you beat yourself up and it goes into all that kind of stuff. And so that third category, that's who I'm speaking to right now. Um, yeah, I'm getting lots of messages here. So let me just kind of check here. Yeah. Oh, good. So Jojo, you're kind of making the notes here. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. So that's really who I'm speaking to right now. So when I start talking about what addiction is, I'm really referring to that third category. And so the list can kind of be that. So what discovered and the way I understand addiction, because it's kind of one of those words that people are like, Ooh, I don't know if I want to identify with that word, but I really see addiction as anything that we do to distract or numb ourselves from an underlying discomfort and dis-ease, and that when we try to stop doing, we find that we can't. So there's this underlying sense of discomfort and dis-ease, and whatever we reach for, whether it's food, whether it's Netflix, whether it's attention, whether it's social media, whether it's like constantly picking up your phone and checking it, checking your texts, you know, like alcohol, like whatever it is, 
It's whatever we're reaching for, for that sense of ease and comfort, because there's an underlying sense of discomfort and dis-ease. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, you know, with that understanding of it, it kind of takes any of the sort of like the ambiguity or the obscurity or even the judgment away from it. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I can relate to that. I mean, I personally can relate to that. I'm like, oh, I've been like that with Netflix. I've been like that with tons of things. Right. So, so here's the, here's the thing. And this is why I, t I, I, I say it's not about fixing your food is because if you're focused on fixing the thing, it's like you're fixing the symptom. But if, if on, you know, today it's food and tomorrow it's social media and, 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 you know, this morning it was, you know, checking your phone constantly and this afternoon it might be getting attention and whatever. Like if the, if this sort of addictive thing is there because there's an underlying sense of discomfort, and dis-ease, if you get your, if you get your food under what people call control, it's just going to pop up in a different area. And so that's what happens. It's like if you've ever gone to the fair and you played that game of whack-a-mole, where like you bop the mole on the head over here and it pops up in somewhere else. Like that's what's happening when we're dealing with this stuff. And so why I have such success with the women who I have an opportunity to, you know, to walk through to freedom is because I am helping them get, get that, get free of whatever is blocking them so that they can have a sense of ease and comfort inside of themselves. And when you have that inside of yourself, the addictions and the obsessions and the self-sabotaging patterns, they fall away. They don't need to be there anymore because you don't need to reach for something for ease and comfort. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why I'm so passionate about this. And what I would say is, and, and again, Jojo, I'm happy to add, um, there's a, there's, it's so important to get deeper clarity. And I actually, I mean, that's like as, as far as I can kind of go in the, the time frame that we have today. But if you want to go deeper and get more clarity around what I'm sharing, um, Jojo, I'll, I'll, I'm sure we can put this in the comments afterwards. But if you, um, I've got a free download, a clarity audio training. If you go to freedomfromfood.today, freedomfromfood.today, uh, you'll be able to just download that clarity audio training so you can listen to that you can get more clarity you can start to get you know deeper into your own understanding and then there's also I believe there's also a link that comes up or there's a there's a page that comes up that gives you an opportunity to schedule a, a 15 minute clarity call with me and that it would be really helpful for anybody who's feeling like they're connecting with this or they're just wanting to go a little bit deeper we don't have the opportunity to do here um, is after you listen to the audio, you can then grab some time with me and we can actually make a plan for your next steps to freedom. So that's just a nice, nice thing that we can do. And if you want to do that, if you just want to go straight to that, you can go to free from food dot today. So it's either freedom from food for the audio or it's free from food dot today. You just book some time one on one. We can just go straight into it and I can help you out. So, um, so yeah, so so I want to also oh good big aha good 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 yeah I want to really hear you know what um, I, I would love to hear if anybody else wants to share first of all there's so much more that I want to share with you I'm like Jojo oh my gosh 20 minutes I don't know we could do like a three part series but um, oh sorry I can't hear you wait like just keep going you're good you're good for the just moment. keep going just keep yeah. going okay. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. So does anybody else want to um, ask a question or have a comment here? Because I really, again, I mean, there's so much that I can share and there's so much that I will share if nobody comments. But if you have a particular thing that I can support you with directly right now, I would love to. Yes. Heather. Okay. So actually, this is Lisa, her mom. Oh, Hi. Cool. How Hi. are you? Yeah. <laughs> so. I am a, I can relate to all three of those different categories, but what I do is I tend to take my emotions, I stuff, I eat, and eat, I get upset, I eat, then I get mad at myself and I eat more, and so, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's a vicious cycle, it's really horrible. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and, and what do you feel like you, you, and thank you so much for sharing this, Lisa. I mean, does anyone relate to, to that part? I know that there's, I mean, I speak with thousands of women, so I know that everybody relates to that. Not everybody here, but I know, I know that people relate to that. What, what do you find is your biggest challenge with that or your biggest frustration with that? Um, I guess the fact that anything I eat, I feel guilty. Yeah. Even if yeah. it's just to sit down and have a shake. If I do a shake for breakfast, anything I put in my mouth, I feel guilty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, this is, it's so, oh gosh, this is so, so big. Thank you for sharing that. You know, um, so, so the congruence code is actually seven part. It's a phase system. Um, it's a seven phase, uh, got seven gateways in it. Um, and gateway two is all about this, but so, what I just what I see is that the do you do you also find that um, Lisa just because you've kind of been you know volunteering to share here and I know that you're actually speaking on behalf of a lot of folks do you do you find that you get um, caught in like a sabotage cycle too with food or that you get like oh you know? absolutely it's, yeah. it it's, it's like self sabotage I could be doing great down 10 15 pounds and it's like I don't know, something triggers, whether it's family drama or, you know, business or just whatever I hear something and I just, I go crazy. Yeah. And yeah. then I feel bad and That's then it. I eat even more and it's because now I'm mad at myself and I eat yeah. even more and it's crazy because I could be sick, stuffed, bloated, but still shoveling it in. Totally. It's just trying totally. to, I guess, you feed the I don't know maybe I'm trying to feed the pain or whatever I don't know well here's the thing thank you so much for sharing this and you are so spot on and I know just because I've spoken with so many people I know how how, how much you are speaking your voice is speaking for so many people right now so here's the here's here's a um well I don't know if it's a if it's a reframe more than like a like a common a common misconception that I hear, because I talk with so many folks who, so many women in particular, who say, well, I'm an emotional eater because I eat over my emotions. And I, and here's the thing is that it's not that you, I'm not saying that you don't. It's just, have you ever had the experience where like, you'll eat if you're sad, you'll eat if you're happy, you'll eat to celebrate, you'll eat to, you'll eat because it's Tuesday, you'll eat because, you know, it's just sort of like, <laughs> Like, like sometimes it's, you know, what I really had to step back and look at and say is say like, oh, it's five, five, five right now in my time zone. I literally today have gotten all of them from 10, 10, 10, 10 to five, five, five. That's really cool. Um, if anybody's into that kind of weird stuff. Um, but, you know, I really had to step back and look at that for myself because it, it, it beckoned forth for me, hey, is there something that's even deeper than my emotions? Like if there's something else that's going on that is underlying this. And, um, so Lisa, you know, the part of where you're sharing, you know, like the sabotage and stuff and you can be 10 or 15 pounds down. And then do you get that voice? It can sometimes sound different for each one of us, but you know, oftentimes I just want what I want or I deserve this or I get this, this kind of thing. Yeah. Gods. Yeah. Do you get like that? Oh, we're back on mute. Oh, she's sometimes, sometimes I, if I've lost a lot of weight and I'm feeling good, I feel like, okay, I've earned it. I can have a nice meal or I can have a couple drinks or. Yeah. Yeah. Have a split. But yeah. I have to stay away from that thinking. Cause then I'll go on the up. I won't even pay attention anymore. And it's like, before I know it, I've blossomed again. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so it's like the, I can reward myself or, you know, what used to happen for me all the time was I would just, for me, I like, I was, I would just have a really busy day where I was giving of myself to everybody else and, you know, like felt depleted by the time I got home. And then it was like, okay, I've been good all day long. I've given everything to everyone else. And now this is for me and I get to have a treat and I just want what I want. And even though I know that maybe I should have, I should have that, like, I just want what I want. And, and there's this defiant part inside of me. So, so the reason why I'm bringing that up, is because what I find is that like the themes that you're bringing up, Lisa, mm -hmm. uh, there's a particular like um, section that we get to dive deeper into where, um, where the themes of 
um, like inner girl stuff come up. Like, I don't know if you had, if, if, if it, like, if you ever, you know, back in the day felt like you weren't, you know, like you didn't have an opportunity or you weren't like seen or heard or, you know, like didn't really get to have a voice. Um, did any of that, did any of those themes happen for you growing up? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And thank you just for being so vulnerable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so ladies, this is what I find is that when, when there is this sabotage thing that's going on, like it's so, it's so easy to think, okay, I've just got to be better. I've got to not be so lazy or not be so weak or whatever it is. But like, this is the deeper stuff. There is stuff that we have that is creating a lot of inner discomfort, a lot of not comfortable in our own skin, a lot of it's not safe for me. I don't feel safe. I don't feel like I can speak up. I'm going to be judged. I'm, you know, a lot weighing heavy on our hearts, a lot of resentment, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Like there's a lot that's going on inside of us. And, and ultimately, like I'm not, um, I'm not suggesting that you spend the next decade in therapy trying to like figure out all these things. Cause that's like, sometimes our mind can go into the psychological approach of, okay, I just have to, now I've got all this stuff on my plate and I've got to figure it all out. And it's like, actually, no, that's, that's, that's not the path of freedom in my experience. Um, and I think therapists are wonderful. The path of freedom um, happens at a, a, at an even deeper level than the psychological approach. But, uh, you know, what I really encourage is for anybody who's listening, if you really feel like, gosh, I know that there's some stuff happening at the core and maybe you're somebody who did go to therapy. I know I went to therapy and it's like, I got really clear on some of my childhood issues, but then they were still there. Like I still had the fear of being abandoned and I still had the fear of being unsafe and I still had you know, like fearing not like I'm not enough and feeling like I'm wrong and bad. Anybody have the wrong, bad thing going on? Like you're something like, like you're wrong, you're wrong, you're bad, or um, you're either not enough or you're too much. Anybody have the not enough, too much thing going on? Yeah. Like too much of the wrong things, not enough of the right things. And so, um, you know, this is the stuff. I don't want your minds to spin out and be like, okay, I've got to go and start try to fix all these things. If you resonate with what we're talking about here today, I would highly, highly recommend that you um, either grab a call straight with me, go to freefromfood.today, or you listen to that free audio training at freedomfromfood.today. Um, yes, totally, not enough, yes, absolutely. Um, and, oh, I'm seeing all these comments. Yes, thank you, Christy, all these, all these great, great comments. I might eat because I'm Italian. I'm Jewish. Trust me. I use that one too. You know, I think that we just, um, but let me support you. If this is something that, that like pings online for you, I would love to just help you to get clear on what your specific next steps are so that your mind doesn't spin out and you now like get overwhelmed with thinking that you now have to figure out all these things on your own. So um, if there's any last questions or comments, we can maybe um, take one more. I know we're really out of time, Jojo, um, and, and I have to jump into my next appointment, but um, I, 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 if there's somebody who's got a burning question or a burning something, I just wanna make sure that we give space for that. I don't have a burning question, but what I would like to share is that, um, you know, because we oftentimes we talk about addiction and it's such a like a you know taboo word. Nobody wants to be labeled that way. But with what you've described tonight um, and being that third person, um, I realize that I do have. A, I don't know what that addiction is or what the trigger is, like you said. But um, it's good to realize that there. Um, that that's what it is. That's why I can't get it under control is because there's something deeper that's going on. So there was literally like, I don't know if you can see it above my head, but like the light bulbs going boop, 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 all over the place. So thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I know the experience of feeling so much shame and, and embarrassment and like, I have all this information. Why can't I figure it out? And 
And when you realize, oh, because it's not about my mind getting this, um, it just, you know, it really, it, it's like, it's actually that in itself is freeing, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Jojo. Well, I will tune it back to you here. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, thank you everybody for just being vulnerable and it's always not easy. The easiest discussion to have and, um, for sure. Um, and to, you know, not to ever feel like we're labeled as something, but if you have a direction on what maybe um, the thing is, then it can give us a way to go. So for sure. Thank you so much for everything that you offer and for um, for your, your audio. And if anybody wants to, and I know that this probably is not the last time we'll have this conversation because um, it touches everybody on a huge level. And, um, I would love to, I would love to, um, I, I'm going to share this with the man in my life because, uh, um, mm-hmm. as a food deprived child, you see, you grow up with a whole, with whole different, um, things around food when the food isn't readily there when you're a kid. Um, and so and for a lot of us, and especially, I, I know there's a lot of us on the call who every day deal with people who, where we're the coach on the other side, helping them um, be better, step to the other side. And it, sometimes it feels so incongruent when we can't get our own shit under control, right? So, um, totally, totally. And to give ourselves some grace and know that we're doing good in the world and in the process if we were perfect and able to just be perfect all the time that would be great but it's not about being perfect it's about being our messy selves and being that authentic piece in the world is um if we were all perfect nobody would be able to to relate to us anyway and how boring that would be we were all just all perfect so um to be our messy authentic selves is is the perfect piece of it so um, just love you guys so much for sharing because I know this is a difficult piece for a lot of us. So thank you so much, Miss Debbie. I appreciate it. And I know we're all going to go listen to the, the Clarity audio for sure. And we'll post up the information on the page and um, so you can get in touch with Debbie if you want to on the outside and, and schedule some time with her. And um, we'll post it all there. And if you have any questions and you want to type them into the page, Debbie's in there too, and she can, she can help answer questions there. And that's a, a safe, secure environment. So you can ask questions there and feel safe. So, and, um, awesome. Thank you. So much. Can oh, we blow you big yeah. kisses? Mm. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.